This is the intro video for the determination of E by M. And if you're wondering what E by M stands for, it's the charge of an electron, E, divided by the mass of an electron, M. So what you're looking at here is actually a beam of electrons that have been bent into a circular path by a magnetic field. And the reason why there's a glow is that right now the electrons are traveling through a gas that lights up when they go past. So rather than seeing electrons, you're actually seeing the glow emitted by the gas when the electrons go through it. In this experiment, you're going to be studying the relationship between how fast we accelerate the electrons downward and how strong the magnetic field is in order to produce a circle of exactly this diameter. So here's that same apparatus in the light, and I'm going to take this hutch off so you can see things a little better. The magnetic field is going to come from these Helmholtz coils, so the big copper coils you see on both sides of the tube. When we put a current through these coils, that creates a magnetic field. And you can use the right hand rule to figure out which direction the magnetic field must point. So if we put the current through the coil in this direction, that, that means that the magnetic field must be coming out towards the camera. Whereas if we put them through the other way, then it must be pointed away from the camera. So inside this tube, we're firing the electrons downward. And again, you can use the right hand rule to figure out if the electrons are pointed downward, what direction is the magnetic field pointed in order to make them curve like this. So maybe take a second and try and work that out. Now the manual has a picture and some instructions on how to hook up all of these electrical connections. And I know at first glance it's like, oh geez, that's a lot of wires. This is going to be really confusing. It's not that bad. We're only basically doing three things here. So I'm going to go through all of these connections with you. So this is our apparatus. This is the power supply. This is going to give us all of our electricity. And this is the E by M apparatus that we're going to be plugging it into. Like I said, there's only really three things going on here. And they've got three corresponding sets of terminals on the E by M apparatus. So the first thing I want you to look at is these two terminals. This is the heater, and it's labeled as such. And what this does is it heats up the anode inside the tube, and that boils off electrons. So we get a little cloud of electrons in there. We don't really want a cloud of electrons, however. We want a beam of electrons. So the heater just gives us the electrons to begin with. To accelerate them into a beam, we actually use these two terminals. So this is labeled the anode. By putting a voltage across here, what it does is it puts a negative voltage behind the electrons and a positive voltage in front of them. That accelerates them downward, and that gives us our beam of electrons. And then these two terminals that remain over here, these are what control the amount of current in the Helmholtz coils. In other words, they control the strength of the magnetic field that makes our beam of electrons curve into a circle. So just those three things. And the first thing we want to hook up is the heater. So that gives us the electrons in the first place. So these two terminals are going to be hooked up over here on the filament supply. And if you look in your book, there is a little close up that tells you that you're going to plug into this one and this one. So you take your two cables. You plug one in here, and one in here, and then those get connected to the heater. And this is an AC current, so it doesn't matter which terminal you hook up to which. The next thing we're going to hook up is the cables that give us the accelerating voltage. That turns our cloud of electrons into a beam of electrons. Those come from this terminal here. So there's actually two voltage knobs. One of them says 500 volts, one of them says 80 volts. We want the 500 volt one. And you also want to make sure this switch in the middle is pointed towards the 500 volt knob. And then you plug in across the two terminals right underneath it. Now this is a DC voltage, so you do need to be careful to put the positive one to the positive terminal over here, and the negative terminal over here to the negative terminal on the anode. And so lastly, we're going to hook up the coil current here. So that goes to these two terminals here. And again, it's a DC voltage, so be careful to get positive to positive and negative to negative. But there is one more thing we need to remember with this, which I'll point out in just a moment. So this is now wired correctly to give us current through the Helmholtz coils. There's just one thing, and that is that we actually want to know what the current going through here is. So this red wire, I'm actually going to disconnect it, and I'm going to put it through my ammeter so that I can actually measure the current that's coming out of here. So I take it from the red terminal over to the amp scale, 
not the milliamp, but the amp scale, on my digital multimeter. And then once it's been through that, it's allowed to continue on where it was supposed to go. And the currents that we're using this week do go up to two amps, so make sure that you're on the amp scale, not the milliamp scale. Same thing on the dial here. So one last thing to check on your power supply is make sure that this switch here is set to A for amps. So this screen here can show either volts or amps. We want it to show amps, so just make sure that's set here. And even though we're going to be displaying amps here, this is a more accurate value. So you want to take your measurements off of this, not off this. So now we're ready to turn things on, but first let's set a couple of the knob positions. So this coil current adjust should be turned all the way to maximum and just left there for the duration of the experiment. Your current and voltage knobs here, however, turn them all the way to minimum, so make sure they're turned all the way down. There's a good reason for this. As soon as we turn on the power supply voltage, it's going to start heating up our anode, which gives us that cloud of electrons. When we turn up the voltage next, the accelerating voltage, that's going to accelerate our electrons downward. At that point, when they're hitting the glass, they're actually capable of drilling a hole through the glass and therefore destroying the tube, and these tubes cost a couple of thousand dollars each, so we'd really rather you didn't do that. It takes a couple of minutes to do that damage, but all the same, once you've turned up the voltage enough that the electrons are being accelerated downward so they strike the glass, very soon after that we want you to also turn up the current knob in order to get the magnetic field due to the Helmholtz coils such that your beam of electrons curves into a circle and doesn't strike the glass anymore. So once you've turned this guy up, turn this one up fairly soon afterward. Now two more things to be aware of before we turn everything on. This power supply can give us a voltage from 0 to 500 volts, but this equipment's only accurate between 200 and 500 volts. So we're going to be turning up the voltage here to about 200 to begin with. The other thing you want to keep in mind is that this apparatus is only rated up to 2 amps of current, so you don't want this number here to go over 2. That's too high. So keeping that in mind that we're going to start with 200 here, keep this under 2 amps, and once we've turned this up, very rapidly turn this one up so that the beam is no longer striking the glass. Given all of that, we're ready to turn things on. And you're not going to be able to see much without the hutch on of the lights off, so that's what I've done here. Now at this point I can actually look in the tube and see that the filament is starting to heat up, so it glows a dull orange in there. So now I'm going to adjust my voltage here to 200 volts, and I don't have to be super exact about this, so just get it in the ballpark of 200 volts. And at this point you'll be able to see that that beam is striking the glass in there. So very rapidly I want to turn up the current too until it wraps into a circle and is no longer striking the glass. And once you've got it in this configuration where it's not striking the glass, it's just bent into full circle, at that point you can relax because there's no possibility of you damaging the equipment. So you could just leave it like this while you figure out how to take your data. So now we can talk about data taking. So you're going to be making a graph, which means you need 6 to 8 data points, and they're going to be spaced between 200 volts and 500 volts for the accelerating voltage. The thing is that every time you change the voltage, that's going to change the size of the circle, and we actually want to make this graph for the same size circle every time. So what you would do is you'd take your data point, so for example I've got my power supply at 200 volts right now, and I would read the current off the DMM, not off the power supply, but off the DMM, and that would be my first data point. And then I would increase my accelerating voltage, which makes the circle get bigger, and then I want to also increase the current going through the Helmholtz coil until I get back to the same size circle. And then I would again take a reading of the voltage off the power supply and the current off the DMM, and that would be my second data point. And then I'd repeat it. And just so you understand the physics of what's going on here, imagine driving a car in a big circle in an empty parking lot. So in order to go in a circle, you've got to be going at a constant velocity, so you'll have the accelerator pedal pushed down to a certain position and held there. You'll also need your steering wheel cranked to the side in order to go in circles rather than in a straight line. Now if you push down the pedal a little farther, your car is going to go in a bigger circle because you're going faster. And if you crank your steering wheel to the side more, then your car is going to start going in a smaller circle because you're making it turn harder. Same thing is going on with our electrons. The accelerating voltage is what sets how fast they're going. So that's like pushing the accelerator in the car down more or less. And the magnetic field is what makes them turn in a circle, so that's like having the steering wheel cranked. A stronger magnetic field is equivalent to turning the steering wheel harder. So increasing the accelerating voltage 
makes the circle get bigger, and increasing the current, which increases the magnetic field, makes the circle get smaller. So here's a close-up of the tube with the lights on, and I've got the lights on just so that you can see a little better that along the center of the tube there's this stick of glass. That glass stick actually has a scale on it in centimeters, and that's going to allow you to measure the diameter of the circle that the electrons make. So for our purposes, you probably want to set the diameter of the circle to be about 9 or 10 centimeters. So now I'll put the hutch back on. And now you can see the circle. Now it'll be a little bit hard to see this also, but it's actually striking that glass stick along the center, and it lights up the numbers on the stick when it strikes them just right. So to begin with, you're going to have your accelerating voltage set to about 200 volts, and you can adjust your current in the Helmholtz coils to adjust the strength of the magnetic field and move that circle of electrons around. And you'll notice that when they strike exactly a number, you see a little fleck of light lit up on the glass stick. That allows you to more accurately set what the diameter is. So you should adjust the size of your circle of electrons to be about 9 or 10 centimeters wide. And it is also pretty normal for this apparatus to have the beam not necessarily exactly hit that stick of glass. So sometimes it's a little bit difficult to set it correctly, but about 9 or 10 centimeters wide is what we should be aiming for. So once you've got your data, you're going to plot a graph of it in order to try to confirm equation 10 in your lab manual. And I recommend you go and look at equation 10 before you try to do this, because if you plot voltage versus current, you're not going to get a linear graph and you're not going to be able to get your E by M value. So look at equation 10, figure out what quantities should be plotted on your graph axes in order to get a linear graph. And also note that the slope of your graph is not going to be equal to E over M. You'll still have to solve for E over M using the slope of your graph. At the end of the experiment, there's also two optional activities that you can do, which might be worth a bonus mark if your lab instructor likes your answers. And they're quite easy to do.